gentlemen, I'd like to call this meeting to order tonight. Welcome everybody here that's in our courtroom tonight, anybody that's on in the virtual world also. Thank you for coming. I know that the weather has not been the greatest. It's much better today than it was yesterday, but uh, glad to see everybody here. Uh, our next item on the agenda would be to allow the other organizations to call itself to order. Uh, Planning Commission doesn't have a quorum, so uh, Ms. Buns? Yes. Good evening. My name is Melissa Buns Carter with Economic Development Commission, and at this time we will be calling the meeting to order. We just got a quorum, I think. We're going to need <laughs> five, isn't it? Yeah, you don't need five. You don't have your, got your vice chair here? No. No vice chair, no chair yet. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Buns. You're welcome. All right, our agenda tonight is on smart meters, and we have some people here from Dominion Power here. Uh, Reagan, would you like to take over, please? Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Oh, yeah, you're fine. Good. 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 Good evening, uh, Chairman, Vice Chair, Commissions. We appreciate the opportunity to be here with you all this evening. Uh, in just a few moments, my team's gonna come up and I'll let them introduce themselves uh, to run you all through this PowerPoint. I just wanna reiterate that Dominion Energy provides reliable, affordable, and increasingly clean energy that powers our customers every day. 365, 24-7. Keeping these lights on is our number one job. Um, now, Given this is a work session, please feel free to ask questions throughout um, and allow my team, if you would, a time to come up um, for the right personnel to answer the questions that y'all are asking. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Reagan. All right. Whoever wants to start first. Good evening. We'll uh, introduce ourselves and go through it. Uh, my name is Patrick Slayton. I'm the project <coughs> manager for the AMI deployment, responsible for all the contractors installing and exchanging the meters throughout our system. We'll do one by one. Good evening, I'm Robin Mastinopel. I'm the manager of our metering solutions group. I'm responsible for all of the technology associated with all of the different metering systems, both the legacy system <coughs> uh, systems and the new uh, AMI system. I'm also responsible for the deployment of the new smart metering system as a whole across the system. Good evening, uh, Kevin Barry. I work with our metering engineering and planning team. Um, my years of experience in the metering department has been 24 years. Uh, AMI project since 2008. Uh, so we are always looking at the technology, making sure it's safe, reliable, and operating as we expect it to be prior to any deployment to any of our service territory. My name is Mark Hubbard. I'm the supervisor for metering, engineering, and planning. The engineering group responsible for evaluating new metering technology for Dominion Energy. All right, so we'll go ahead and go through the presentation. I don't have a clicker. Who's driving? Cool. Um, all right, so electric companies across the United States have been leveraging smart meter data to better monitor the health of the energy grid. Um, so system. This is not a new system at all. Um, Dominion is installing this, but our peer utilities all have this technology. Um, 58 investor-owned electric companies in the U.S. are fully deployed. So any other utility you can think of generally is already going to have AMI. We're a little bit behind the ball in that aspect, right? Um, so the Edison Electric Institute, um, they report on uh, they do reporting for the industry overall throughout the United States. Um, and in 2020, there's 107 million smart meters deployed. So all that to say is we are not proving ground here. We're kind of coming up to what our peers are already doing. Um, so smart meters enable a two-way power information flow that improves the visibility into the energy grid. So having this capability 
at the point of delivery lets us see how our system is operating and the health of our system. So that is the main driver. Um, so a little bit of our history and our AMI deployment. We've been at this since 2012. Um, we started with Alexandria, Herndon, Charlottesville, Midlothian, Williamsburg, and Blue Ridge. So each one of those areas has really different aspects. I uh, think about how congested Alexandria and Herndon are, the mountains of Charlottesville, Midlothian, a little bit smaller city, then Williamsburg and Blue Ridge, you're rural and mountainous again, right? So we were testing out the system, seeing how it works, how we could better improve our system and what was the best choice for us. Um, and then in 2018, we went through the Great Transformation <coughs> Security Act, where the Virginia, Virginia General Assembly uh, declared that the Grid transformation projects, which include the AMI deployment, to be in public interest. And then we had SCC approval of the full AMI deployment um, in 2022. Um, so to date, more than 2.5 million AMI meters have been installed throughout our service, story, service territory, um, giving us remote meter reading and operation, uh, access to detailed energy usage, um, we're getting the same information that we have traditionally through the meters, we just get it more frequently now, right? So typically we would read meters every four weeks, now we have the information of every four hours, okay? Um, we are at the very end of our project, 91% uh, complete. We are actively installing right now in Fairfax, Springfield, Gloucester, Northern Neck, we're at the very end of that. I think there's about 200 meters left to exchange in this territory um, as far as our contractors. And then Chuckatuck is nearly complete as well. Um, we are going to finish our AMI deployment this year. Next slide, yeah. Uh, so a little bit about how it works. So I like to think about this as a spider web. So at the middle of that spider web, is a collector um, that has a cell card in it, and we call those devices and collect the information from them. The meters speak to each other through radio frequencies, um, and they go from meter to meter to meter and end up getting to that collector. Their main goal is to send their information to that collector in the center, right, in the center of the spider web. Um, and then we kind of build out a mesh, and they all have to connect to each other to talk. So what are the benefits for the customers? So uh, remote meter reading, we we'll don't have to send anyone to your house to come read, read a meter. Um, it's more detailed information of what you were using. So uh, on the next slide, you'll see a manage my account, um, what you have access to. Um, it's actually a screenshot of my account of, you, of usage. Um, and you can see it. A uh, very detailed level will show in a second. Uh, remote meter turn on and turn offs. So if you think about a place like a college campus where there's a lot of in and outs, we don't have to roll a truck to go turn them on and off. Also, um, turn offs, so we can remotely do that, but at the same time, if you pay your bill, get back in good standings, we're gonna turn you back on. We can turn you on in minutes versus a couple hours to roll a truck out there to put the meter back in, right? Then a healthier environment, so we're reducing the trucks on the road, reducing, reducing emissions. Um, new rate options, such as off-peak. So with more data, we're able to offer different plans for allow our customers <coughs> to change their usage and reduce their bills. Then power outage detection. Um, so with these meters, when they lose power, they'll send out a message to say, hey, I'm losing power here and then we know when it comes back on, so we know the health of our grid. As storms roll through, we know what's on and off. It's a lot easier for us to respond and send crews where they need to go in order to remedy the situation. So this is what I was referencing a few minutes ago. So this is manage my account. This is actually my personal account. <clears throat> that green line is the temperature outside. So. You can see as the temperature, um, as the weather changes, so does your usage, right? So it's, as it's colder, you're using a lot more power to keep up, or if it's hotter, you're using a lot more energy to keep your house cool. Um, so this is available at monthly, daily, and hourly 
intervals, so you can really dig in if you want to try to save energy. Um, this is where you would go to monitor it. As far as the deployment, as we are uh, going out and exchanging meters, uh, we send out a postcard to all the, all the customers uh, on a given route saying, hey, we're going to be in your area exchanging meters. Um, and then on the day of, our contractors knock on the door, uh, leave a door hanger whether the exchange was successful or not, um, with access to a QR code where they can go to our website and also a little bit of information on that handout just about the meters and why we are doing this. And then also our customer service agents are available to answer questions as needed. Um, you know, as you call in and you have questions about when you're, if you have an AMI meter, you know, or they can ask, answer some service level questions as well. Um, these are the fact sheets that we distributed out earlier. We have extras if you would like some, um, but it kind of goes over the benefits and the security and safety uh, this is all available on our website, um, and we're happy to speak to it in detail if there are questions tonight as well. And then just additional public resources, uh, our dominionenergy.com slash smart meters, uh, where you can find out about our project, and there's a frequently asked questions section that is very useful. Um, and then if you want to find out about the GTP project, um, that website is there as well. I was expecting a lot of questions, so I guess we're going to have questions now. All right, any board members got any questions real quick? <clears throat> sure. Is there any, um, any opt-out method for one of your customers if they choose to do so? Yes. Um, there are some opt-out slides. Are you driving in the back? If you go out for presenter mode, there's hidden slides. You just got to go to them and unhide. While you pull that up, um, there are opt-out options. You have to be a residential customer. We don't allow opt-out for commercial customers. You have to be in good, bill, in good credit standing, so you've got to be paying your bills. Um, and you have to sign up for the program. Right now, it's a, you have to sign an agreement to say you're going to allow access to your meter so we can actually get there and read it. Um, because the opt-out meters, there's no communication in them at all, so it is a walk-up read. We will be at your house every month to read it. Um, and also, <coughs> in that agreement it is saying, in the, at a future date, if we charge a price for it, you'll be obligated to charge, you'll be obligated to pay that in order to stay in the program. Is there any charge right now? Currently, there's not a charge. Okay. With respect to, um, Mr. Fisher's question, um, does this cost of the meter become part of the rate base for the area, or are you just out of a complete act of generosity giving these away? Paying for them. I'm sorry. I'm sure we're paying for it in our bill, correct? Yeah, so there's a rate base case. Mm -hmm. Do you want to speak to yeah. that? Yes, the um, smart meter rollout has been approved as part of the last Virginia biennial base rate case. Um, just so that you know, you're right, it's, nothing's for free, but the, mm -hmm. the old meters were old and needed to be replaced anyway. They're installed largely in the late 90s and early 2000s, so they were reaching end of life anyway. And this is the standard technology for the industry at this point. So. Well, how much does, do these smart meters cost for a residential customer? Uh, I mean, you were part of that meter contract. I think the meter itself was about 80, 80 85 dollars. Is that where we landed on that? Yeah. I think that was about right. That's, you know, a negotiated price and it depends on the type of meter. Um, so we don't disclose the exact details of that contract. But for a residential customer, it's around, it's around an 80 85 dollar meter. And how do they pay it when it's installed or is it spread over a bill or? Yeah, it's just part of base rates. Okay, so they pay, they've already been paying for it ever since your new base mm -hmm. rate got approved. The base rate case was last year. Right, so yeah. they're, not, they're paying for it now whether they have it or not. Right. So the way base <coughs> rates work, 
I don't, I'm not an I'm, expert. I'm familiar with it. They, they look back and right. look forward. So right. they're not exactly, it's based on how much expenses we had the last couple of years, basically. And how much you project to have in the next couple of years thereafter. Correct. For everything we do, just about. So that becomes your, your base rate. And that includes payment for these meters, correct? And is that done on a statewide basis or a countywide basis, or what? How do you, how do you attribute costs to say Northumberland County? So I'm not going to be able to get into the nitty gritty details, but it is my understanding that for the base rate cases for the Dominion system, it's looked at across the system. I can't. I'm not an expert in this. I'm not. Part of the team that does that. <coughs> so it's statewide. I I believe so statewide in the sense that we we don't serve every. Uh, your statewide system. Yes. Okay. We don't serve every house. I understand. That. We've got Northern Neck Electric serving half the county. All right. How much additional cost per month did that smart meter add to that base rate? I have no idea. I don't, I don't know that detail. You mind they can get back to us? I can. The, so the case is public information. If you'd like to dig into it, all of our um, SEC cases are public information. I can try to look into it and see if they can identify that detail. And it should be broken out in your bill as well. <coughs> That's, that was a list of items that I read off mm -hmm. the land. Mr. Williams, go ahead. Yeah. Do these meters tell you just when the power is on or off, or do they tell you what the voltage is? <coughs> if you have low voltage or not, does it indicate that? On the on a face value, uh, on your house, no, it does not say what your voltage is. But we can get that information from the meter. Yes. You get it from where? We can get that information on the back end from that meter. So we can monitor voltage through the meter. Um, but you see that on the screen now it's been some years ago I had uh, I had a problem uh, with the business and uh, I was getting brownouts frequently um, I called and I wasn't getting any response and and then it got to the point where I lost uh, three refrigeration units in a week and two computers <coughs> and I couldn't get anybody to take responsibility other than it was just a coincidence that all those things went out at the same time. Um, so I think it's important uh, in business cases anyway, and especially in a home, if your refrigerator is uh, or a uh, big piece of equipment is uh, subject to uh, getting burned up, uh, that you can tell whether the uh, voltage is adequate. Yeah, that's a huge benefit of these meters, right? Because we can monitor voltage as it flows through the system, so we would have been able to see that in this case, it sounds like there was a bad transformer leg for your case. Um, a month later, they changed the transformer and my problems went yeah. away. It sounds like there was a bad <laughs> leg. Yeah. Also a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> Under your opt-in program, you mentioned that <laughs> if, if an individual wanted to opt-in, they'd had to sign an agreement to allow someone from Dominion to come back onto the property to read the meter. Yes, sir. Okay. Then why was that not put in place for them to come on the property to install that meter? And why was the option not made available in these handouts so the citizens would know ahead of time that they had an opportunity to operate? So part of the terms and conditions to signing up to get electric service, you were allowing Dominion access to their property so our property is that meter right so we have access to that meter at all times which you're going to want if your house is on fire or something like that we're going to want us to come pull the meter so right right so that's the reason for that but um as far as the opt-out meter in that process you're giving us access to read the meter so a lot of people put stuff in front of their meter where we can't get to it right so that is saying you're going to allow us unfeathered access to come read the screen essentially right and you said they had the option for years and didn't even agree. We've been kind reading. odd that you need something now. We've been reading remotely for 12 years, right? Um, can we go back to the slide of the benefits?
So under the smart meter program, was it any federal funds brought into this to, to help fund it? Or was this something that Dominion done on their own? Or was it private funds put into it? To my knowledge, there were no federal funds involved. This is, uh, this is really a normal um, operation and main, maintenance of our system that we're responsible for is the, the electric utility. As I said a while ago, the, the previous meters, we refer to them now as legacy meters, were aging out. Um, they needed to be replaced. It's our responsibility to maintain that equipment. And as, as Patrick said earlier in the program, we spent several years studying the different technologies available before we settled on the technology we chose. This is our responsibility as your electric company to do this. Um, how much did it cost to implement this program? <clears throat> Roughly. Uh, the approved amount by the SCC in, when we were approved to, to do the AMI rollout, I believe it was around $400 million. So, Looking at your first one up at a remote meter reading, that really is not going to benefit a citizen because it's going to benefit Dominion more because you're not paying that person to go out and read those meters and you're not having the vehicles to go up and down the, down the uh, road. The yes. detailed usage of it, I can get that. Uh, the remote meter turn off and on, again, to me that's going to benefit Dominion more so than it would can an I, individual. Can I respond to that? both for the reading and the, the manually turning folks on and off like we had to previously, those costs were also passed into base rates. So we've taken those costs out of the base rates by replacing the legacy meters with smart meters. And back up on that, on the, uh, on the disconnect and the turn back on. So you said you've taken that cost out all right, will there be a cost now? If if you turn my electricity off, then you turn it back on. What cost am I going to be looking at? That's an excellent question. Yes, we did change the reconnect fee. When you are disconnected for non-payment, there's always been a reconnect fee. I hesitate to give you the number because I don't want to give you the wrong number, but I think we went from about $35 to $750 or something like that. But don't <coughs> quote me on those numbers. Oh, it's it a, it's a big difference, yes. a big reduction in, in yes, cost. For the most part, we're able to do it remotely. <coughs> Not every <coughs> smart meter has a remote switch. Um, it's limited to 200 amp and just recently 320 amp meters. The bigger meters don't have it. <coughs> but generally speaking, we can we can do it remotely. All right. In that case, is the charge still the same, or does it, or does it increase? I can't remember if there's a different charge for residential versus commercial. I, I can't. I don't want to say. I can't remember because generally the difference in the size of the meter is residential versus commercial. I just don't. I don't remember. I don't. All right. I don't want to speak. I didn't mean. No, you're out. fine. And I guess the the point I'm getting at is it was a huge investment on Dominion's part need to see such a little return. I mean, I'm after looking at what benefits the customer. Um, but again, and it looks we like, would have had to replace the meter. And I understand that. I understand that. But I guess what I'm getting at is it seems like everything the power company does, we the customer, you keep saying it's a cost savings to the customer. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a savings for this. It's a savings for that. But every time you've had two rate increases. And you look at the bill, it's a fee on there for green energy, it's a fee on there for solar, it's a fee on there for the, the turbines. You know, is it going to be another fee for this? And that's, that frustrates people. Understood. I can only speak to And I understand that, and I'm not, and I'm, please, don't take me as being rude to you. I'm not, I am just straightforward. <laughs> um, but it, it's frustrating because it, you know, these big companies are making money. And yes, there is new technology, and it's good technology. But everything you implement, the citizens are paying. Understood. I'm one of the rate payers myself. Yes. <laughs> and, 
and you know, and it's, it's new and shiny and good. It's wonderful. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, it don't save us any money. It may save the company money, but it's not saving us money. Well, I can tell you the, the savings that the smart meters generate via remote meter readings and remote turn-ons and turn-offs <coughs> and things like that are passed through to you through base rates as reductions. But let's go back to your voltage situation. Who was speaking? That was you. That was you. So as Patrick pointed out, one of the things these smart meters do is give us more information, specifically voltage information. We are actively collecting the voltage readings on almost, almost every smart meter right now every 15 minutes. And there's another team that's part of this grid transformation project that is analyzing this data and looking proactively for situations similar to that for overloaded transformers and other things so that they can get ahead of it. So we don't have an emergency in the middle of the night where something blows up and we've got to fix it unplanned on overtime in the middle of the night. We can plan it out. It's much more controlled and cost effective. And hopefully we save customers like you some trouble along the way. But those programs do cost money, right? So I'm, I'm saving money over here with meters, but it's enabling other projects that cost money but save money in other ways too. So there's always puts and takes, I think. I get your point. I'm not disputing your point. I'm a rate payer, a payer. I know what my bill is. But we are trying to do the right thing at the right time with the technology available to us and provide you with the best service we can at the, at the right cost. And I guess what I'm looking at, you know, if I'm a mechanic and I buy a new set of wrenches, I don't bill that to my customers. But it's I, baked into your prices. My labor rate's the same across the board. I'm not going to increase my labor rates because I bought a new set of tools. Understood. I guess that's one way of looking at it. And I, and I know it's more to it than, than what I'm looking at. I would say that as you're buying lifts and getting bigger and bigger in business, you're buying mm -hmm. better stuff. Your rates go higher because you're providing a different service, that's right? Great. So as you scale up, your new prices change. And they go through that process. <clears throat> what is the off-peak plan that's referred to on that slide? He always makes me answer <laughs> In I'm general, on, in I'm general. I'm on the off-peak plan. What is the off -peak? What is it, is, it first? Um, so the normal, what we call Virginia Schedule 1, is the normal residential rate. It's a flat kilowatt hour rate no matter when you use the kilowatt hours. The off-peak plan, they, we were, essentially we were required to offer a plan like this by the SEC. We studied um, sort of in aggregate across the system our, our load. So that's that's customers drawing electricity, right? It costs us more during times where everybody wants electricity to, to fuel this beast than it does in the middle of the night where not that many people are using electricity, right? So in the winter, you've got things, everybody wakes up in the morning and bumps their heat up, right? People come into the office and the offices start bumping their heat up in the winter, right? And then in the summer, in the Evening, you go home, the offices might slow down a little bit on usage, but your houses bump up. In the summer, <coughs> it's in the afternoons. When it gets hot, everybody's AC starts going up. So in the winter, we have a morning peak and an evening peak, and in the summer, we have right. an evening peak. Right. I know what off-peak so is. What is your plan for off-peak? So the, off, the plan is, if I use electricity during the peak time, <coughs> I pay more for <coughs> whatever. If I shift my usage, which I do habitually, I don't run my dryer right now and we have the peak is from 5 to 8 p.m. if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on that, but something like that. I don't turn my dryer, my clothes dryer on until after 8 p.m. because my price per kilowatt hour drops. All I got to do is modify my behavior and I save on my electric bill. And how big a drop is that? I, d I can't tell you exactly, but what I recall from having been in those discussions, again, do not quote me on these numbers. I'm talking about your but bill. It, but it was something like <laughs> seven cents a kilowatt hour in peak, two in off peak, and then overnight from midnight to 5 a.m. is super off peak, so it was like seven, two, and one, roughly. Okay. So I can save money if I use. Well, it sounds like you can save a lot of money.
that one. So I has, just, has that been described anywhere in your handout? Oh, it's not my program. It's available. There's information available on our on Dominion Energy's website for that. I, I don't run that program. That's not my program. There's a lot of marketing. I think they marketed to everyone that had a smart meter. I am I think you will certain get that, that there are numerous customers yeah. in Northumberland County that are aware of this. I think they send out the marketing materials for the off-peak plan to people who have received a smart meter and had the smart meter for 30 days or 90 days. I can't remember exactly what their marketing program so is. So you have to take the bait to get the, uh, well, you, okay. Your, the other meters do not record the detailed information throughout the day that I know enables there, us to tell when you're using the I electric. know there have been a lot of utilities in this country that have reduced rates for off-peak hours regardless of how the customer is metered. I take it Dominion doesn't do that. Well, you, you, I can't reduce your rate overnight if I don't know when you're using the electricity. I have to know at what point during, it's not possible. Okay. It is possible. They're doing it all across no, the country. they have AMI meters. They have meters no, they that don't. are recording usage throughout the day, like our smart meters. Of all places, Detroit started doing that in the 1970s. They must have, and Dominion has had what we call time of use rates since the 70s as well. Okay. We could time. bring you a meter, a legacy meter that would record those intervals, but the effort to read those meters is exhaustive and very expensive. They, they have to be probed, you have to wait for the data to download, it's a process. So we don't offer um, that anymore. The smart meter is the only efficient way to be able to get that data at that level of detail. So if you want discounts, you have to take the bait, the bait sure. being the smart meter. Well, it's the standard that we're installing, right? Yeah. So there's not, it's not bait, it's how we monitor our electricity. If you well, I understand that, but if you opt meter, out, you don't get it. The right. opt-out meter right. doesn't record the interval data. It's just and a straight visual Since you've register. already, since all the consumers in Northumberland County, Old Dominion, or Dominion Electric consumers in Northumberland County are already paying for these meters through the rate base increases, it makes no sense for them not to get it, correct? I'm not sure I understood the question. I'm sorry. They're already paying for <coughs> the meters in their base rate, as you described earlier. Correct. So they might as well get the meter sure. and bite the bullet because they're already paying for it anyway, sure. correct? <coughs> but if they don't get the meter, for whatever reason, they don't get any, dis any discounts, correct? They do not. So you're not getting discounts automatically, automatically from getting a smart meter. You have to sign, you have to change your billing plan. <coughs> to get the 1G rate, right. This is not a default rate. This is a rate you have to sign up for and it's only available to people who have the smart meter that can record the details. We <coughs> is the off-peak plan discussed on your website? Yes. Okay. Is the ability of people with these meters to get discounts through the off-peak plan discussed on your meter and is there a simple, on your website, and is there a simple way to like check a box or something. Uh, so again, I don't run the off peak plan program. I am. Is there, is there anybody here who does? Pardon me. Is there anybody here who does? Who, I know. Who's it familiar is, with it? I'm probably the most familiar because I have it. All right. I, I signed up for it. When you signed up for it, how did you mechanically do that? I believe I called the call center. I can't. I can't remember. It's been a couple of years. I may. There may. I may have been able to sign up for it on the website. I honestly do not remember. I know the, you can. The call, calories coming over the hill. You can. I got you. <laughs> I, you can call our call center and they can get you straight on it. Ma'am. You got it. Hi, Sarah Marshall with Dominion. That's exactly correct. So we do have the information on our website, and if a customer decides that they want to opt into the off-peak plan then they can either go to their account or call into the standard Dominion number, talk to a customer service rep to change their account to do so. So it is not difficult for somebody to get into the soft peak plan, I take it. I, I think that's an opinion, but I would say it is not difficult. It's just as simple as calling to pay your bill over the phone. Okay. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Um, on this same slide, healthier environment and the only item listed as contributing to that is fewer trucks. Right? Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, um, what safety studies did Dominion conduct when they were selecting the AMI product? Um, and if they didn't, did they rely on any that anybody else had done? There's, there's a broad spectrum of concerns that I would expect somebody want, would want to look at. Um, the devices, they do what they do. Uh, and as far as I can tell, they do it at two watts. So just kind of looking for a background on the safety studies that were done. So the meters that we use, the smart meters that we use, are ANSI approved, American National Standards Institute. And part of those tests is a, God, FCR section 15 for, uh, uh, what's it called? It's the FCC tests for emitters or for electronics that aren't supposed to be emitters. And also there's FCC tests on the NIC card. Dominion itself does not certify these emitters for FCC emission safety. I, I, I guess what I'm really looking for was some kind of indication of how much Dominion was concerned about the topic going when they chose to go forward with it. Um, I, they, they, I mean, what, what were the, the meetings in the meeting rooms about, you know, when, when they talked about it? I'm sure you did. Um, and that's, that's kind of what I'm looking for is, is what kind of due diligence did Dominion do on their own, if any, and, and if they decided not to, um, what other external resources beyond um, certifications from other entities that gave a stamp of approval, did you do anything beyond that to, to validate that it was a safe choice? Our group didn't have any hesitation on approving these meters from a safety standpoint. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my next point. Um, you've mentioned that these meters can collect data at a rel relatively, actually revolutionary pace. Um, with the old meters, that wasn't possible. I have to believe then that there's a mechanism for monitoring the flow of data, and that's probably not sitting on a server in some server room that Dominion owns. Are these things, are the management mechanisms for these meters managed in the cloud? Um, and if so, who else, by agreement or, God forbid, malfeasance, but more importantly, by agreement, who else beyond Dominion would have access to that mechanism? I'll let others chime in with greater detail, but we use a secure network to relay the information. And in addition to that secure network, no personal information goes across. So names, numbers, anything like that, just usage data. So there is not personal information and it is on a secure network. Um, and just to kind of follow up on your First question, um, we do have <coughs> manufacturers of these smart meters. They are tested and studied and they're um, approved by ANSI. They also, um, we require the manufacturers to send us their test results as well as they will do routine kind of sample testing before they're installed as well as after they're installed to make sure that they're up to the standards. Would it be possible for the public to get a copy of those test results? I think we would have to check with our legal team to see, so. <laughs> but we, we will I had to ask. We, we will check, and if so, we will be happy to reach out to you and let that you know. Is a, that is a public record, the test results. By the way, who provides your system security for data transmission? Do you know? I don't even know that. I hope it's not Microsoft. <laughs> so the next, the next layer of that, that <coughs> network thing. By the way, I'm a cybersecurity engineer by you trade. You know way so. more about it than I do. Though. Um, so the, the next question is: is, uh, is artificial intelligence used to manage the the cloud presence of this system? Unless someone behind me knows, we would have to get back to you, but we can confirm that for you. I would imagine that it has to be. Um, 
just insight. I don't want to go into nuts and bolts here in this room. Um, and, I, and, I'm, and it makes me nervous that artificial intelligence would be involved with that. Um, and the reason being is that uh, I've yet to run across an algorithm that's perfect. And to be and clear, I'm not sure if it's yes or not. We will, look, we will get back with you on that answer. OK. Um, I, I would really hate to see an artificial entity make a decision that puts a homeowner at risk. Um, and, and in other areas, we, we've seen AI make bad choices. Um, for now, that's, that's it. But I reserve the right to ask further questions later. Of course. And I apologize in advance. I, I wasn't at the last uh, meeting with you guys. And I guess it would be for, for Patrick, just more, I'm curious more than anything. From a public safety standpoint, utility control is just paramount for fire and rescue folks. Um, do you have a policy, does Dominion Power have a policy vis-a-vis -vis through a direct line to our local communication center so that if there was a house on fire or an inside propane leak when the homeowner dialed 911, you could immediately shut the power off to that house making it safe to you, safer for the firefighters and uh, as well. I mean, tactically, it's, that to me, the, the real good side of this story is, is that if you guys had a policy and an operational communication center that would have liaison with fire and rescue, uh, that could save lives. I mean, what happened up in Northern Virginia, um, that could have been prevented by a smart meter shut off. Yeah, so um, to the best of my knowledge, that is not a policy right now that has been discussed, but we have to implement the entire <coughs> system to make big shifts like that, right? Um, but fire calls are networked through our region, ROC region of control, and they dispatch people. They have the capability to operate the meters remotely, but generally, you're looking for an open point, so you're going to remove that meter anyway. Um, the problem, and you know that there's there's inherent dangers with removing the meter yeah, in an emergency yeah. situation, for example, like a gas leak. The only thing I'm, I'm saying is just, you know, empathetically, really, and sincerely, I think Dominion Powers Corporation really needs to, to look at that. Uh, that is something that you guys could really save some lives on. For sure. I probably, it's probably, to a lot of these folks here, it's probably the only decent thing that that, that system could do. Um, you know, I could I could see many many situations to where if it was done effectively and communicated with these these communication centers, it could be invaluable. That's all. Okay. Um, okay. A couple years back, I had an opportunity to meet the gentleman that was, I think, head of the old cyber security department. So, does Dominion have a cyber cyber security policy? Yes. Is that online as well? Is that something that we could? Can you clarify policy a little bit? I think getting back to what Mr. Johnson was asking earlier, is in any situation, what is what is in place to handle issues with, with these meters if, if there's a security break? So absolutely. So on our website, we do not detail out um, for security reasons, but we do have a cybersecurity team um, that, to be honest, um, millions, if not billions of um, concerns a day that they track, mitigate, that sort of thing. So we have an entire team dedicated to that. Do you have, I don't know who to ask this question to, but do you have any information? Does has any citizens, to your knowledge, in Northumberland County at this time opted out to using the smart meter? Yeah, I don't have that number on me, but there are system-wide, it's about uh, less than 1% of our uh, AMI meters installed have opted out, so it's a very small number. You'd say perhaps 1% of Northumberland then? Probably, yeah. I think they're just realizing they're taking off that's, that that's, was that's my point. I that's mean, they, I, you know, I, I don't think anyone knew they could off it. That's what I wanted to hear. Um, you said that uh, smart meter is able to, well, it'll be able to detect power outage when the power goes off, power comes back on, and you said it would transmit that to the menu. Yes. All right. So does that mean that the customer does not have to call in that we've lost power or is it all? Is I'm not going to encourage you not to call. 
uh, you should call. <laughs> but uh, it is, these meters have the capability to send alarms, send communications, two-way communication. So yes, we know when stuff goes on and off. So your reaction time would be much improved. Right. The biggest benefit is managing where we send our resources, right? Because you'll see the, a pocket of 200 meters out over here versus five, you're going to go to the 200. So we can manage our resources better <coughs> to send the crews where to go. Okay. All right. Now, does a smart meter have the ability to collect, to connect to other smart items in your house? No. And so it does not. It's a private network. The networks don't communicate. For example, we have smart meters on the North Carolina Maryland line across the river. There's another smart meter network. They don't communicate, just like we don't communicate with devices inside your home. It's all different IP addresses. Everything is separate. So with the IP addresses and all, how about the frequencies? How, how do you keep the frequencies? We run on the 900 megahertz band that's approved by the FCC, and then the two systems don't interact. Okay. Now, I got a good one on this because I know a couple people that are very smart. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know them, right? Yeah. Oh. Uh, What's in place to keep someone from being able to monitor that system? I mean, if they know your frequency, right. stopping them from programming that in, another device, and tapping into that system. So they're going to have to, you can get on the band, but you're going to have to break the security to get into the encrypted data. So the band with is public knowledge because it's a public network. Public right wavelengths, right? But accessing and making sense of the zeros and ones, that's a whole different ballgame, right? So, yes, Kelly. <laughs> and also the Patrick's point. Each one of these networks has a unique network identifier. So you have to, you know, go through the right encryption, the right security, what we call the handshaking <coughs> between meters, network devices, and the head-end system. If, that, if those do not correlate, you don't get on the network. No, no device will get on the network. Is it fair to say then that the mesh network that we're talking about is effectively a VPN? I mean, if the entire thing is encrypted in all directions, that's kind of what it is, right? I, mean, I know it's locked set to that network ID. <coughs> Even for our own way that we go about testing, for our lower environments to make these approvals to the equipment for our production use. We even have separate network IDs for those lower test environments that, you know, those devices can only talk to each other. And those don't, and we have them in the middle of one of our production environments, and they do not communicate out to anyone. So it's a well segregated VPN. It's well segregated, that's correct, sir. <laughs> okay. Good way to put it. Um, yeah. If I can, I'd, I'd like to ask another one, and this one's kind of forward-looking. I, I notice in, in my diggings that um, technology all, always changes. Um, and I saw some things that aren't all together yet, but some of the appliances out there are providing it. Um, for example, my stove actually has communications capabilities. Um, I don't use that, um, but the details behind it are kind of scary because on the smart meter side, I also see in the future um, the possibility to oh, assemble a system where the, those monitoring my stove, my house, could also monitor my stove. That's not here today. It would require ISO standards and some other things to take place, to my knowledge. But have you folks been discussing any of these things? I'm not going to reduce you. I say no. Like uh, we're interested in your power usage. We're interested <coughs> in what you have inside you have your home, happen. right? So um, we see your kilowatt hours go up and down. Just at the front door, right. uh, the meter being in the front door. <clears throat> yes. Um, but are there plans to enhance that capability to gain more granularity? I would say to the best of the knowledge in this room, no. Not okay. All 
right? All right. Um, let me go back to that question about um, are smart meters able to connect to other Wi-Fi devices in your in customer's home? Sure. On the internet, it says that one of the most exciting smart meter features is their potential to connect with other smart devices in your home network for greater convenience and control. So many of these devices will be uh, your thermostats, your uh, programmable thermostats, and so on. Anything IoT. connected to the Wi-Fi? Yeah, we're we're not connected to your Wi-Fi. We're not connected to anything but, in your. But it is it able to connect. Sure. So the um, there are some utilities deploying smart meters. What's it called, Kevin? A Han radio? It'll be called a Han. Home area network home area radio. radio. We do not, our smart meters do not have that capability. We made the decision not to include that capability when we bought our smart meters. <coughs> or is it? All right, does, all right, does, does it uh, anywhere in your literature on and on your website say that it will not connect to any smart home device? Probably in the back. Shall not connect to it. I think it is there's a, think there's a frequently asked question on our website that addresses that. So. Checking on that too. Now you opened me up for another question. I was trying to be quiet, but now you started. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we did. What follows is all your fault. We did bring handouts tonight that yes. cover both the data security issues as well as the RF uh, safety issues. So. Who manufactures these meters? Where are they bought? Who, who puts them together? Don't say China. <laughs> There's several different brands, um, but we purchase majority of Clara meters. Um, they're manufactured from parts all over the world. So where can we find um, detailed information on the manufacturer? And what's, what's the makeup of these meters? If somebody wanted to read that and they wanted to learn a more, little more about these meters and what, how they work and what's inside of them, where is that information? Where can we get that information? Where is that information? We can get that information from the manufacturers and send you um, links to their websites and to their contact information. So we okay. can, we'll get back together. Greg is taking that down and we'll send that out to you all. So what, what was the what was the name of, of of your manufacturer of the smart meter? There's several of them, but uh, a majority of them are Clara meters. Okay. Our Clara, I think, is what he said. Our Clara, A C L A R A. Oh, okay. Where are they? U.S. or for? They're U.S. They're owned by Hubble. Let's kill this other question real quick. How about radiation? What's the, does it put off any radiation? If so, how much and how far does it travel? The engineer. I'm the engineer, Mike. Um, so, what we try to look at is again, we go with the regulatory bodies that allow these to be commercially available. We are going to reference the Federal you know, Communications Commission because that who sets the standard for radiation levels and what they call maximum permission, permissible exposure levels, MPE. You look like you're shaking your head. You've done some studying on that. So what that is basically looking at is, you know, the meter, how much is it radiating and is that within the safe, permissible, allowable tolerances that they put forward? So we have done some studies ourselves on this separately. The maximum level that the Federal Trade Commission allows is what they call 610 watts per centimeter. Okay. What is that in, in time, over time? We mean over time. I'm not sure if I understand that. Radiation, you have so many parts per million, but it also is based on time. It's also based on time and intensity. Yes. And right. So yeah, with that, the inverse square law. Right. Um, you know, that's one thing that they take into account. So, and what I'm looking at, mm -hmm. you're talking about a very small amount, 
and this is at somebody's bedroom window, and they're five feet away from it, and they're there, and this meter's there for five years. What is the exposure and the damage or harm it could be on that person, causing uh, like that person? Like a cumulative effect? Hmm? Like a cumulative yes. effect? Yes. No, I don't have that information <clears throat> on that. All I know is that we were looking at what they permit when they do their testing and how these fall within that testing criteria. When we've done ours, We've looked at what percentage it is of that of that maximum exposure, right. and we're getting anywhere from you know like you know two one percent two percent five percent of that allowable limit, so very low on that. But it's still a question of time. I don't know if they get and that's and right now that's yet. that's unknown time and distance yeah, and shielding. Any, any good studies on that yet too? I mean that's. You know, certainly we're trying to keep an eye on always, but, you know, under the regulations that were, you know, because these couldn't even be approved for use commercially if the Nick Card manufacturer did not get these approved through that regulatory body. No. That MPE is specific just for your device, right? It doesn't take into consideration other devices in the house that also could be emitting radiation. Well, yeah, and they, they test, when they do those tests, they do it in a very specific isolation chamber, which kind of gets over, over, you know, overlooked in, in a lot of respects, because you're right, there are a lot of other environmental factors. What they call ELF is electric low frequency devices, and that is everything from your outlets, your wiring, in the home, um, just, you know, other environmental factors, and when we see some tests that are out there that get done by, you know, people, and you know, there's a lot of faults that we see within some of those, um, you know, displays because there, it's not properly being used, used and not properly accounting for background RF noise, what we would call, and, um, you know, so. Can you explain it, the RF mesh? I don't quite on the... Well, I know the, the frequency band that you, you referenced. It, it's on a 900, 900 megahertz right. uh, frequency. It's between 902 and 928. That's what these NIC cards operate in. It's the same, you'll hear the comparison. It's the same as, you know, the same range of cell phones, baby monitors. Um, so within that band range, what they call it, it's like a frequency hopping. So the meters will be looking you know, within that frequency range to <coughs> see what channel we can use for communications. And again, that's within that particular band where is where they hold. Okay. I got one more question. Yes, sir. What makes the connection on these meters? Is it done through your power lines? Is it done through Wi-Fi? Is it done through fiber? What makes your connections? Like the local area network? Yes. Hack yeah, like meter so to meter? Meter to meter and from the meter to back to Dominion, where well, it's that's like, like the, the RF, because the, the meters themselves do not have cellular capability. Okay. So that is just RF. They look for a neighbor. They have pretty good range as far as, you know, getting, you know, what we call visual mm -hmm. uh, to each other. So it could be a quarter mile, it could be, you know, half a mile. And then where we have those access points or those real, you know, takeout points, those meters kind of hop through each other with the data, and then once it hits that device, which is cellular, then that information is coming to the backhaul and into our network. Okay, so when you say they're looking for a neighbor, who's the neighbor? Is it another meter, or is it? It could be you, it could be me, it could be, you know, whatever, you know, the neighborhood as far as the meters within, within range. And the, and the more density we have, the stronger the mesh is, which makes it even easier for the communication processes to happen. One very quick question. Yes, sir. Are there any federal or state limits to <coughs> your selling third party, selling consumer data to third parties? I will reference to my non-metering folks behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to repeat that garbage? No, I've got it. So, um, just simply, Dominion does not sell any of this information to third parties. <coughs> In addition, we are required by federal and state laws to adhere to all um, information privacy laws. Okay, so 
by policy you don't do it and your current interpretation of the data you're going to collect in the future is that if you, there may or may not be a compliance issue with federal or state privacy laws, correct? Are you asking if in the future we would be in compliance or? I'm asking you whether or not you, first of all, have ever sold consumer data to third parties, unrelated third parties, and secondly, if there are any plans to do so in the future. I would say I cannot honestly answer either one because I have not been a part of that as far as if we have sold and I cannot speak to what we would do in the future. All right. Are there any state or federal limitations on your ability to do so? We are required to follow all personal, personal information privacy laws. Okay. Are you aware of these laws? I personally am not well versed in them. That's okay. we have a separate team. That so they may or may not exist as well. Part, first, I do know personal privacy laws do exist. I just am not. I am not a lawyer. I'm not well versed in their languages. Do they exist in Virginia at the state level? Yes. Do they exist to affect Virginia at the federal level? I believe so, but I would have to confirm with our legal team who looks at laws and interprets them. If I w did not want my personal data being sold to third parties, would I have to go through some process to opt out of whatever distribution my data has experienced to third parties I by can't, Dominion? I can't speak to that because Dominion does not sell that information to third parties. So You're sure of that? We do not sell this information You're to third parties. You're positive of that? Unless there's someone who's going to say it otherwise, yes, I am positive that we you, do not sell this information to third parties. Is this something you hope for or is this something you know is a fact? I would not be sitting here saying that we do not do it if I was hopeful. It is a fact. The information we're talking about is just usage with these meters anyway, right? Correct. That's so far. Right. You'd be surprised what you can derive with little tidbits of information that goes way beyond just that. Which gets to your AI concern. Yes. Simply a large language model and people are mining it all the time for data. We've got about four more questions on two sheets that we had. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> and I'm sure it may be some more questions, but um, we'll, we'll try to stick with those until we get those finished. Um, have there been any fires when the smart meters have would have been installed? Have they been the, the cause of any type of fire? No. None documented so far. So if there's a fire and it starts at the meter, you can generally look at the connections behind the meter. So electricity is friction, right? So if there's a bad connection, heat builds up, and that's how you have a fire, right? Okay. Um, so as a result of a smart meter, no. Okay. Um, another question that we got was in the United States, the Fourth Amendment rights prevent unlawful search and seizure in the home. Um, do the smart meters violate these rights in any way? No, not that. Uh, of, no. The potential is there. Uh, you, you, you can't collect the data at the frequency that you're talking about and say that there's not enough tidbits there that it could be if compromised. It's. <clears throat> I suppose you'd have to ha have to do it under direction, but it would be virtually impossible to avoid the capability being there. I guess it's the same thing with your cell phone. That has a very big exactly. potential. Exactly, exactly. So if Google can do it or, or whoever, it, it's, it's almost impossible to avoid the capability. Using it is a different question. Only had a third question. <clears throat> um, do the smart meters create dirty electricity? No. And that's what I was getting ready to ask him. <laughs> that's some electricity you got to go wash before you use it. <laughs> 
Talking about very electricity, this is a term commonly used for harmonics. Our system, for background purposes, electricity is delivered to your house theoretically at a perfect 60 hertz sinusoid. Whenever there's any sort of nonlinear load, such as uh, CFL light bulbs, LED light bulbs, inductive motors, or anything like that, it'll create harmonics. Um, so that's what we think of as dirty electricity. If you think about, do our meters put dirty electricity on a customer's house, or will that impact the customer? The meters have a switch mode power supply, which is a device on electronics used today to convert AC electricity to DC electricity, because that's what electronics use. And so it's a converter. Yes. And it will uh, contribute a minor amount of harmonics to the system. Okay, my last question would be <laughs> switch mode power supply. So yes. pretty much that's an AC DC. Yeah, it's something that is on every single person's com uh, computer right now. Inverter, okay. All right. That's all we have. Have a board member's got any questions? Staff, have any questions? All right. Does the public have any questions? All right. Whoever wants to come up first. My name is Doris Kinnick, and I'm a member of the Virginia Medical Freedom Alliance, and I head up the Stop Wireless Radiation Harms team, and I'm a Christian. I'm going to hold it together because I'm not a big fan of, of lying. So um, number one, those collector meters, are the homeowners given informed consent when their collector meter is at their home? That's one of my questions. Should I keep going or? Let's, let's get them one at a time. And, uh, okay. And address and, us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'd like to know if the homeowners are aware, if their home is the one that's getting sent all the radiation and all the data, and they're the ones collecting. I want to know, are the homeowners aware that their home is a collector site? That's not how it works. They're, the collectors are on poles, so our utility poles. So it's not on individual homes. So then that goes to the wireless telecommunication facility, so 2G or 3G or 4G or 5G? 3G. 3G. Yes. Uh, sorry, 4G. We were originally 3G and then we upgraded to 4. Okay. Um, <coughs> you, Your collectors are on a light pole somewhere, sure. somewhere in your system. Yes. And you have X amount of meters that transmit to that. The number could be from... 50 to 100, couldn't it, or more? Yeah. What's the range on transmitting? So those, uh, what's the range? So uh, AP and access point has a range of about a mile, um, and then we install relays, which is essentially, uh, it doesn't have that cell phone card in it, but we install it on poles, and that also has a range of about a mile, so that's how we get signaled down the road. And I would assume that when the leaves come out on the trees, it's going to affect your service. Yes, sir. So that was a big part of going to Charlottesville and installing a bunch of this in the mountains where everything works really, really well in the winter. And then suddenly uh, in the spring, we have a lot of problems, right? And so we have to install more devices and increase our communications. Thank you. Hey, right, ma'am. Next question, please. Can I ask more? So y'all mentioned doing the right thing. I think the right thing really is to prioritize safety over technological progress. And the fact that they're claiming that these are safe without any data to back that up speaks volumes. Um, I was at the SEC hearing um, there in person and handed a plethora of information. And since the Dominion representatives were not able to give that to you, I'd like to give you a copy. <clears throat> What was shocking is that the hearing examiner, Alexander Skirpin, mentioned and recognized that there is harm from the meters and that opt-out meters should be an option as well as medical exemptions to them. 
and no price for that. Because in other words, um, we the people should not, what's the word? We should not be charged to protect our own health. And I know personally of multiple people. I live in Chesterfield County, and y'all didn't start pushing these until 2022. And I know of people whose entire families have been harmed, and they were sick immediately upon installation. I know of a woman in, in Matthews County, um, Virginia, who was picked up and physically moved from in front of her meter when refusing. I know of a gentleman up who's a former military officer, and his power was shut off for refusing. Also, there's whistleblowers that have come forward that used to install these meters for Eclara. He is well aware that they're being installed by not certified electricians, which goes to your point about the fire hazard. Um, and they're being installed without any surge protection. They're being installed hot. And for a fact, I know there are fires, and I'm so mad I didn't bring pictures with me. I know personally of three different people whose homes caught fire. Um, this is my county, Chesterfield, and I have FOIA'd them to find out how many electrical fires there were. So your question was right on point. You're welcome to look at this. The problem we have is that it says outside equipment and it does, it does mark meter boxes. But the problem is the fire departments are not, they're subject to whatever the head of the United States Fire Department is. So they won't specify on here, but they know there's a problem, okay? They know there's a problem and so does Dominion. I'm going to just, I'm going to say that. Um, I also have people who have had plants that have died once these meters were installed by the sides of their homes. So there is a real safety issue. There is a real fire hazard issue, and that's on the consumer. It can be your product. It can be Dominion's product, but it's on our homes, and it's our property that's at risk, and it's our health that's at risk. Um, I want to recommend everybody watch Take Back Your Power. It's a documentary about smart meters because you're right, it's been going on for a long time and people have been having their power shut off and fires have been started and there's an uprising throughout the United States, which I think is part of the reason why it took them until 2022 to roll these out. Um, the cost for most people has actually doubled once the smart meters are installed and I'm aware of people that have had double charges even with the opt-out meters <clears throat> and the fact of the matter is even at the SCC hearing there was an electrical engineer Bill Bathgate I can share that with you who um, testified that he tested someone's opt-out meter and that was still at levels high far beyond safety and when we talk about safety the Federal Communications Commission was sued in DC Circuit Court there was 11,000 pages of evidence what they found was that their levels, their safety levels, are arbitrary and capricious, meaning they don't protect anybody from anything. So saying that the FCC is safe here to save us is a crock of baloney. <sighs> as far as the data, data goes, Green Button Download My Data. Can you speak to Green Button Download My Data and Walmart and why they were at the FCC hearing? Anybody? I know exactly what Walmart's interest in green green button, button download, download my data. Um, so as the slide says there, customers can go online and, and receive, review, download their detailed energy usage data. So it's 30 minute increments of their usage. Um, I think the federal government wants it to be available in a in a format that's com easily compatible with like Microsoft Excel or whatever. So we are green button, I'm gonna get it wrong. Down, Sarah, do you know we're green button download my data compatible, but there's another version that, uh, is, is that what Walmart wants is the other version so that third parties can get your data. You can sign off so third parties can get your data, but we have, we have not signed up for that. There's a uh, rule making process going through in North Carolina now. I don't, I can't remember if there's one going through in Virginia now that we're participating in, but we're, n we're not signing up for that until there's clear rules in place that everybody has to follow for that type of thing. Okay. Does that answer your question? Not quite. Oh, sorry, that's about <laughs> all I have. Thanks. Um, 
I would like to know, because I know from people who've had um, installers come out who've actually said they're grateful when people do not have smart meters put on their homes. How many of you that are here today have a smart meter on your home? All of you? Oh. Okay. <clears throat> I want to suggest you take a look at this EMF medical Correct conference your questions. and I'll give you that. There is a conference happening April 11th to the 14th. It's free, it's online. It's called EMF Hazards. It's the 2024 summit with a wealth of doctors um, speaking out about radiation sickness and poisoning because I'll tell you what, these smart meters are gonna make more people have electro hypersensitivity than anything else. It does not matter. It's the erratic pulses that these smart meters give off that cause the biological harm. Okay, I, I know that because I've spoken to a microwave scientist, an RF engineer who used to work for the Department of Defense for almost 30 years. Um, and I've spoken to people that are injured and harmed by these. And I have family in Pennsylvania where I just got back from and they don't have an opt-out option. They don't, they don't have any option. We should be able to keep our analogs because those are the only ones that don't affect our blood from coagulating. My mother-in-law and my sister-in-law both have cancer. Their smart meter was installed a year ago. They've been living together on the, at the, on the same property. It's right outside of their living room where they spend the most amount of their time. It's right by their front door. These, this is the largest medical, unethical medical experiment ever performed on in human history. And if you have children and you have a family, I don't, I don't know how y'all sleep at night, to be honest with you. Maybe you really aren't aware and it's time that you educate yourself on the hazards and the risks and the harms of being surrounded by all this radiation. Because it, who knows what your body's threshold is? Yes, there's wireless mesh, gulag, um, ghetto surrounding us all the time between cell phones and Wi-Fi and you know all the other smart devices but when you add on a smart meter to the side of your home that is radiating 365 every four hours every 15 seconds for a mile and spreading it out everywhere and what amount of time is it going to take before you or your family is sick and then what who's 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 accountable who's accountable The government. The, the, I just have one more thing. The switch mode power supply is the, is the reason, and, and it is part of the reason why the dirty electricity goes through your outlets, through your entire home. A smart meter is not the same as a cell phone. I can turn my cell phone off. I can keep it away from me. I can turn my Wi-Fi off at night. In fact, I do. My home is hardwired. I'm trying to protect my children because they're sensitive to this. I, <clears throat> I hope you guys that are here from Dominion do not end up with headaches and nosebleeds and upset stomachs and heart arrhythmias and hypertension and neurological injury and cognitive loss, diabetes, cancer, mood disturbances, high blood pressure, rashes, nosebleeds, vision problems, fatigue, anxiety, insomnia, and all the other plethora of issues that come along with these meters being on the sides of your home. I hope you do your diligence, due diligence, and look up the health hazards, and I'm happy to give you information and talk with you afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else like to ask a question? Thank you. Tom Jeffries from Calio. Earlier there was a question asking about some of the manufacturer's safety data, and I just want to point out and get that in the record that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, uh, their Center for Devices and Radiological Health, are responsible for regulating radiation emitting electronic products. And per the FDA, those manufacturers are required to maintain records and submit them, and there's specific guidelines in the Federal Register. My question for Dominion, will you provide this body with copies of the required reporting from the manufacturer to the CDRH as outlined. Would Dominion like to respond? The answer is we'll, we'll 
follow up with that, yes. This is what I'm holding here is a uh, little report from the National Toxicology Program. It is uh, headquartered at the National Institutes of Environmental Health Sciences. And it's a study on cell phone radio frequency radiation and it was dated in January 2024. Um, the studies that they're referring to were completed in 2018 in their most comprehensive assessments to date of the health effects of animals that are exposed to RFR radiation. What did the studies find? They found that there was clear evidence of an association with tumors in the hearts of male rats. There was some evidence of association with tumors in the brains of male rats, and there was some evidence of the association with tumors in the adrenal glands, glands of male rats. Do these uh, findings apply to humans? The study says they cannot be directly applied to humans. However, the studies question the long-held assumption that RFR radiation is of no concern as long as the energy level is low and does not significantly heat the tissues. So my question, again, it was asked before, what can you tell us about these types of studies on the effects of animal, human beings and, and, and the environment? We are not members of that body that did this study, so we cannot speak to those. Well, just as a follow-up, I think the concern that you're hearing here tonight is there's concerns of health-related issues with radiofrequency radiation, and so that's one of the reasons why we're standing here in front of you today. And I guess I'll just wrap it up. I heard earlier in the presentation, um, and it's on Virginia's website, that um, when they're going to come install these smart meters, they send out a postcard about 10 days in advance. I never received a postcard in the mail. I instead got the door hanger on my door when the meter was changed. But I got a postcard from Dominion just recently about their green power initiative. So I think the mail works. Why I didn't get a postcard letting me know that that meter was going to be changed, I don't know but I darn sure would have put up a stink about it and would have been asking about opt-out meters. So that's all I have to say. Thank you much for your time. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Mr. Penny? <coughs> My name is Jim Penny and live off River Hill Road here in Eastville. The question I have to the group from Dominion tonight is number one, I, mentioned, I heard mention the, the wattage of two watts per meter output. Is, may, I, may I approach and ask that question? Yes. Is that correct? I'm sorry. One watt, okay. And this has the capacity to communicate with other meters, correct? Okay. Um, and I believe you said it was uh, in the range of 900 megahertz? That is the range for that. Okay. If my memory serves me correctly from years ago when I was in the boat, had, had a boat, and had a VHF, I believe that was in the 900 megawatts phrase. Or, or some megahertz for it. Uh, area. Those that have got boats today <coughs> know what their 5 watt unit is and they can talk what 10-15 miles with a 5 watt 900 megahertz and they're using 1 watt and they're saying they're only getting a mile. I have to ask that question. I'm very suspect. So the, the other thing that, that disturbs me is that when, when you go to the gas station and you buy a tank full of gas, and you pay for it, and you roll out. There's no limits on what you can do, when you can use that gas, where you can go with it, or what you can do with it, correct? Then why, in today's environment, when that meter is running outside, and I pay for that kilowatt every single month, why do I have to be subjected to all types of data intrusions and telling me when I can use it and what I can't, and oh, by the way, if you use it between 10 and 11 in the morning, you're gonna pay more for it. 
I've noticed that since my meter was put in, I believe it was the 2nd of February, on my bill, I've already started seeing demand charges. Now, I'm still on Schedule 1, and I don't know if I'm being charged those demand charges or if it's just somebody waving a red flag at me. Yeah. So, yes, there's some concern. A lot of concern. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Anyone else like to speak? Hi, my name is Suzanne Smart. I am a resident of Northumberland County. I live in Heathsville. Um, I had a question for Dominion. Um, I had read that these communicating smart meters, um, that they communicate up to 190,000 times per day. I'd like to know how many times they communicate. Are we done duty um, study? What we're really referencing is the duty cycle. Um, our meters, when we looked at it, we actually had the meters Nick Vendor simulate, and they did this on 80, a lot of 88,000 meters and 50,000 meters. Um, their duty cycle over a 24-hour period was about 60 seconds of transmission a day. Um, I think what has happened and we, we've identified to that under a 90,000 transmission number, when you're looking at a meter and you see the display, there's a, there's a rolling display. That's not indicative of a communication. That's just indicative of the display turning in the meter to give us the total, total KWH, sometimes a demand reading, sometimes showing error codes, things like that. So that's really, I, I always see that 190,000 number that's referenced, and I'm just not sure where that come from because really the overall duty cycle in a 24-hour period, even at 4% or 1%, you know, of, of a given day is a very low transmission time. And I think our schedule right now is really primarily four-hour readings. Um, you might have some occasional ones on the bill that. day, or you know, that we have a bill read in conjunction with some reads. Um, so that's really heavy. But the, part but the capability is there to uh, the capability is there to communicate more than 60 times per day. Uh, we would be probably overburdening our system with that kind of communication. And you're talking about 190 okay. per meter, 109,000 per meter. Per meter, uh -huh. 190,000 times they would never, per day. They would never be able per to meter. communicate and send out their information with that kind of in traffic. It okay, so then is there a difference between the number of times a meter on a home that's considered a hub for the mesh is going to communicate more than a home that might not have a hub meter on it? Well, I think what we're considering hub, we don't have hub meters. We have access points, which are a non-metering device that collect the data for the other ones are just pass-throughs. So if there has to be what we call hopping, <coughs> that meter at hopping through is not burdened with any additional transmission. It is just a pass-through to get out to that access point so that data can be taken back into the head-end system. So is the pass-through point going to communicate more times than the access point? No, they're all the, they're all the same. So, so if, if I have a smart meter and then my next-door neighbor has a smart meter and across the neighborhood they have a smart meter, we're all going to be communicating with Dominion the same number of times per day. Is that correct? Every house in the neighborhood? I'd say on average that is probably correct. On average, doesn't doesn't matter what payment plan I'm on or what no. billing cycle I'm on. Okay. No, the meter, okay. So the meters are just recording data. They're recording your kilowatt hours every 30 minutes, and they're recording right now their voltage every 15 minutes. Every four hours, we send a command to the access point to read the meters. That's it. Okay. It did you takes say, a few minutes. Did you say right now? You said I'm sorry. Right, you said the phrase. You said the phrase right now. That's the way it's configured to collect 30 minute usage okay. data and 15 minute voltage data. Okay. And then we read it every four hours. We, so we send that command to the access point every four hours and collect the data. Okay. It takes a couple of minutes. 
four hours later, we'll read it again, system-wide, all at one time. So your fact the sheet, reason, I'm sorry to interrupt, sorry. but the fact sheet they give us said that smart meters are not on all the time. They transmit periodically and typically for less than 5% of the day. So my emphasis on her phrase for right now and not enabled is that in, their, in some of Dominion's paperwork, um, in, in their opt-out paperwork um, that I received in the mail, they say that they have different features that are then disabled. So um, two-way communications data storage features are disabled. However, the document does then go on to say that the company has the right to modify these requirements from time to time at its discretion. The most recent version of the requirements is available on the company's website at <coughs> dominionenergy.com slash smart meter. So that tells me that the capability is there to do these things. Maybe the capability is there to interface more frequently than what they're saying is happening now. Um, and, and you are to agree to this, but that these things can change at any time. This is a fluid, um, and, and I don't know if that's a legal term or not, but um, that it's a fluid agreement because, because the terms can change at any time, but my terms can't change, Dominions can, on their website, and it's up to me to go find that and research that. Um, there was a lot of discussion earlier about rates. Dominion used to advertise that these types of technology would save us money. I don't know if you all remember that, but I definitely do. Five to 10 years ago, there was lots of talk about how this is gonna save you money. Now in their paperwork, um, if you read, it says you, you may experience savings. It also says that the company may experience savings. Um, most recently, I had an employee come out to my home and tell me directly, I say this firsthand, that they used to be told in their training to tell the customer that it would save them money. And their new instructions are, no, do not say that to the customer. That was very telling to me. They have been instructed to no longer tell the customer that they're gonna save money with these devices. I also wanna point out that one of the glossies that they've brought today does not say anything about it saving you money. It's got all the benefits. Uh, I see the word control on here a lot. It says, enjoy greater control over your energy. Smart metering is all about giving you access to more detailed information on your energy usage, giving you the insight you need to control how and when you use your energy. Smart meters can measure energy usage in small intervals throughout the day. And they, that doesn't coincide with what this gentleman said. He said he, they were gonna read it, I think it was what, 60 times? 60 times a day. This says it's throughout the day, enabling us to offer voluntary pricing plans with rates based on time of day usage, giving you even more control over your energy costs. Just wanted to point that out to everybody here tonight. Um, there was also talk about the Eclara um, company being the manufacturer. I want to point out they are also the installer. Um, two visits to my home, the, the, that gentleman was um, with Eclara, even though he had a Dominion badge on. Um, I spent some time researching the equipment on the Eclara website and I found multiple <coughs> discrepancies in the descriptions of the meters, both within Eclara's website and when comparing Eclara's website with Dominion's website. I have taken screenshots of those. I don't know if it's still the same. This was back last fall um, when I started getting postcards. These were the postcards that I received. Um, my husband and I received four of these in the mail. Um, there was mention of 1% um, of the population in the area has opted out. I want to point out that Dominion does not make it easy to opt out. Um, you're not, first of all, you're, this, if you receive it, this is what you get. It kind of just looks like you're getting a service visit. A lot of people have no idea. I talk to people, they don't know, they don't know what this means. 
Um, and in, in my opinion, this should be something that you opt into. If, if you decide you want this on your home, you go to them and you say, yes, I want to save money. Yes, I want this device on my home. And you opt in rather than everybody is going to get it. You have to jump through hoops and sign the paperwork they want you to sign in order to opt out. Just my personal opinion. Um, we mentioned that they communicate up to 190,000 times per day. That seems like a lot. Do you know how many seconds there are in a day? If I did my math right, there's 86,400 seconds per day. So we're talking about two to three times per second that these things are communicating. Um, another question I would like to ask is about the phases. I know that these are being installed in the area in phases. I know that because um, the representative I spoke with over the phone told me that we were in phase one, even though I had requested via letter, phone call, and email to not have the device installed in my home that we were still in phase one. When I asked the question how many phases there are, I couldn't get an answer. Does anybody here know how many phases of installation there are? Just one. I'm, I don't understand. So we're deploying the meter system wide. We've been doing that since about 2012. We will finish that this year. Just guessing that maybe the phases are we have contractors doing the majority of the work. They're contractually going to exchange about 98% of the meters. And so another phase will be the cleanup phase as we get to stuff that the contractors couldn't get. We have Dominion employees going out to locations where our contractors couldn't find the meter, couldn't get in, couldn't get access. That's where Dominion employees are going and making exchanges. There's also ex meters that are a higher, they take a higher skill to exchange and those are other Dominion employees exchanging those. But that's not exactly phases, that's just how, that's the approach. <clears throat> yeah. uh, that's interesting because there's about 30 to 40 homes in our neighborhood and only a handful of them have received the smart meters. So I, I don't, that's an odd, to me that's an odd discrepancy. That doesn't jive with what I'm, I'm experiencing firsthand. Well, my, my question is, as a, as a customer, um, I requested to not be part of the program, but instead I was one of the first to be approached by Aclara and then Dominion. And I was told by a representative on the phone, and I have her name at home, I, I keep records of everything, um, that this is a phased rollout, that there would be multiple phases, and that we were part of the first phase. And I asked at that time, why, why couldn't I? It seems to me that a common, that a, a courteous thing to do would be to say, okay, we have 10 phases. This is a customer that doesn't want to participate. Why don't we bump them down to phase 10? I just, it, it seems to me like. There's no phases. Okay, well then how, why did somebody at Dominion, Richmond, in Richmond tell me that they do? You do. Okay. Um, okay, I think, I think that's everything. Thank you. All right, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. I have one question I want to ask you about the, um, where is it now? Hold on, I lost my place. All right. Hold on, give me a second. Hold on just a second. One, one of it cost. Um, it says on your site that a smart meter will not increase my cost to my plan. I think you said that would be an increase in cost. Is that the cost of your plan? Yes. So the meters are going to read and bill just as previous meters did. 
and then there's a rider <clears throat> on the bill as well. I think it more or less referred to a <coughs> fee. Fee, that's probably what it is. For having the smart meter installed, and I, and I know y'all said that you recouped the cost of a, this smart meter through the billing over time. Right. And, and, and what he had here, it, it plainly stated that it, there was no charges. I think it was 80, 85. All right. Um, all right, yeah. Here it is. It says, our smart meter is free. It says, there are no additional charges incurred to get a smart meter. In fact, the widespread use of that smart meter can actually reduce costs for all of us. All right, I can understand that. All right, by making our business practices and our energy use more efficient, customers should not notice any change to their monthly bill as a result of this new technology. Now, I have heard some people tell me that they have seen a difference in their electric bill. They've been charged a higher rate. Uh, any answers to those questions? Yes, yeah, so sir, there's not a higher rate. Uh, the only way I would be able to answer that question is if uh, if you have a higher bill after we do the exchange, you can request your old meter to be tested. And we often look at those old meters and they've been installed for 15, 20 years. It's an old mechanical meter. Dirt gets in it, it slows down. Yeah, right? I understand so that. The new, yeah. the new piece of equipment is accurate and going to be, your bill may go up as a result of that. Let me throw this one at you. <laughs> 91 year old little lady lives by herself. Yes. And her electric bill usually runs between 170 and 180. Of course, the electric bill was over $600. That sounds extremely abnormal, and I would hope that she contacted Dominion. Oh, she did, but she had that. to pay it. Yeah. Yeah. Was her meter tested? I have no idea. But I know she paid $600, over $600. Wow. That doesn't sound right. I would agree. I would, would like to look into that. You look at your normal kilowatt use per month. It varies a little bit, depends upon temperature. You've been, you look at back at it at last March, last April, was so many you used 100 kilowatts. This month you used 110. All right, What's, it's not much difference. It wouldn't be 600 bucks worth, even if you use 500 dollars. I mean, 500 more kilowatts. I mean, if you were using 500 and you went to 550, it's not going to be that much difference. But someone that their electric bill always is within a certain range, is averages up and down just a little bit, a few dollars, and then it makes an increase of $600 right after the smart meter has been installed. I can't say that the old meter was off that much. There's no way in the world for that little lady to use that much okay. energy. By all parties. <laughs> so something is wrong, and then and then when Dominion tells you that you have to pay it, or else they're going to cut your electricity off. Now that's something wrong there. I th I think we we agree that that is not the normal, and as stated, we would recommend that she reach out to Dominion, ask us to come out and test the meter, which we would do. Um, we have done that in the past, but I cannot speak to an individual customer, um, one, not knowing their account, but also just from a privacy perspective, cannot speak to their account, even if I didn't know it. No, I wasn't going to call any names or anything. <laughs> All right, do I have anybody in the virtual world that would like to speak tonight? Yes. I'll yes, be All right, would you... Uh, Ask, ask, state your name and ask a question, please. Yes, my name is Wayne Corey. I live in Reedville. And my question is, do the smart meters or their collection devices have the ability to regulate the flow of electricity to my home or business? No, they can turn it on and off, not regulate the flow. <coughs> All right, did that answer your question? All right, do you have any more questions? Wayne, 
Dean, do you have any more questions? No, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, does anyone else in the virtual world have any questions? I'm, I'll be back to you. Anybody else? All right, does anybody in the world have any questions for Dominion? In the world. I'm sure somebody. That little old lady got some. <laughs> I wouldn't want to see that little lady here tonight. <laughs> huh. I know she can get fired up. Oh, yeah. Anybody come on yet? Grace, do you have any questions for Dominion Power tonight? Grace, do you have any questions for Dominion Power? Lynn Stewart, do you have any questions for Dominion Power? Hello? Uh, Hello? Lynn? Do you, Lynn? We, can we you can, hear me? We can hear you. Yeah, this is Grace. Oh, hi. Um, can you hear me? My name is Grace Hilbert. I'm from Fairfax County. Um, and I am your canary in the coal mine that's here to tell you that smart meters are very painful to someone like me who can actually feel the pulsing from them. And the pulsing, as the woman stated before, occurs probably about every 30 to 45 seconds, 24 hours a day. Um, years ago, I realized that I was sensitive to Wi-Fi and, and phones, so we got rid of the Wi-Fi in my house. Um, you can't come into my home with a, with a cell phone on because I can feel them, and they give me headaches. But when recently, when they installed smart meters in my neighborhood uh, back in November of 23, um, I've never felt anything as powerful as a smart meter. I've never experienced that before. And the pain in my head and the heart palpitations and the inability to sleep from them is off the charts. And it's way more than, it took me years to realize um, that the Wi-Fi in my house was the cause of a lot of my problems. Um, when we got rid of that, I felt a lot better. Um, but now with these smart meters around in my neighborhood, and I still refuse one on my house, um, but in my neighborhood, they all they pulse and they, they come through the walls of your home, and there's no way I can shut them off. And I have to spend most of the time in my basement to stay away from them. I can't go for walks in my own neighborhood because I can feel all the smart meters pulsing at me. And this is not a statement of maybe this is not a statement of um maybe it's hurting people and maybe it's not i am here to tell you that we are all electric sensitive and i am just more than other people um and i can feel it and it's dangerous and it may take people years to realize this <coughs> i lived in a house with wi-fi with all these symptoms that i am telling you and I didn't realize what my symptoms, what was causing them. So I was going to the doctor with headaches, and I couldn't sleep. And I was going to the doctor because my heart, I had to wear a Holter monitor for a week at one point. Nobody knew what was wrong with me. But then magically, when the power went off one day, all of a sudden, I felt better. And so my husband started playing with different things in the house. And when we realized that it was the Wi-Fi bothering me, we, turned, we got rid of it. I haven't had Wi-Fi for years. And I feel a lot better. We are all electrosensitive. I just happen to be electro hypersensitive. And the part about the, about the dirty electricity, the switch mode power supply causes voltage transients. And as Tom Jeffrey stated, the NTP study stated that these things, you know, 900 megahertz is very detrimental to the tissues in humans and plants and in animals and in bees. What are we doing to the world? And if it took me years to realize that the Wi-Fi was hurting me, it's going to take people real years now to realize the smart meters are hurting them. But I'm telling you right now, today, yesterday, last year, 
Smart meters are bad. They hurt. And they're going to hurt everybody, whether you realize it now or not. It is microwave level radiation, and it needs to stop. And we need to be able to tell people that we don't want this. And I, for sure, do not want this on my home. And I have convinced a lot of my neighbors to opt out, and they now have opt-out meters that, according to my EF, EMF meter that my husband puts near their houses, is not pulsing so far right now, which is great. And I don't feel them from my neighbor's house, but when I go outside or in other areas of my home on the other side of my house, I can feel the smart meters, and they're terrible, and they're poison. And you, all you have to do is look up the fact for years, there are organizations all over the world and stories of people, thousands of people, look it up. Don't go on Google, go on Yandex.com and you will find thousands of stories and thousands of organizations all over the world of people, Wi-Fi ref refugees, refugees and smart meter refugees. That are, there are people dying and people are suffering so badly all over the world from these. I mean, just do some research and look at it. Why would you put this in our, our environment? You know, the, the, the Earth has a natural, it's called the Schumann res resonance. It has a natural frequency of 7.83 hertz. We are supposed to be able connect, to connect with that. It's, our cells are supposed to connect with each other to tell us when we're well, when we're sick, what you need to do, like a computer, to upgrade each other. But we can't communicate with all these man-made frequencies overlaid over it. And if you think this is done by accident, it's not. And the people that at Dominion may not know what they're doing and may not understand the detrimental effects of this, but there are. And the people that are way above them, they do know. And it's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate what we're doing, but this is, this is the greatest threat to humanity. That if, look at up Dr. Sam Milham, and um, there's, other, there's so many doctors that are screaming from the rooftops about this. Um, David Carpenter, he, for years people have been saying how detrimental these are. Barry Trower worked for the military in Britain, I believe. He's been doing lectures for years. You can go on YouTube and listen to him. He's an RF engineer, and he will tell you straight out how detrimental these, these smart meters are, and the 900 megahertz interferes with our body tissues. It, it, it's poison, and we just need to do something right, and I would like to know from Dominion, if, if, if there's proof positive that these are detrimental, then what is your avenue about curtailing it or telling people, okay, if you don't want it, keep your analog meter. And by the way, my analog meter is working perfectly fine, so I don't know what the woman was saying about what's wrong with them. I don't know. Mine's been working fine. There's no problem with it. So if someone can answer that, I would love to know. What's the problem with the analog meters? And it's, this is not an if question. They are poison. They are detrimental to our health. So what is your plan to not put them in areas where people don't want them or to remove them from areas where people like me are sensitive to all the other ones around them? All right. Thank you, ma'am. Right. Well, that's a question. Is someone from Dominion going to answer it? All right. Give them just a second. What, what exactly is your question? Well, for one thing, the analog meters, mine's working fine. I don't know of any in my neighborhood that were having a problem. So what is the specific problem? Number two, there is a problem with the safety of these meters. RF radiation is microwave letter ra radiation. They are basically cooking us from the inside out, like a microwave oven cooks your food. So why are you doing this? And if we're telling you, and there's thousands of research st studies and doctors, why are you continuing to do it? Why don't you stop? All right, so question one, why are we replacing the old meters? The meters that are installed now, we communicate with the, the old meters, we communicate with a radio. We drive around a van that sends out a radio signal, then that meter sends a signal back. It's the same technology. 
We're installing new meters because those meters are no longer supported by any software. All of that is going away. We can't support the reading of the, that meter. So that's why we're taking them out. We're putting in a new meter that is the standard of utilities across the nation. Everything is FCC approved and that's the route we're, we're following. We're following the guidance of the FCC. You, you the keep FCC. saying FCC approved, but the Federal Communications Commission's guidelines have been already stated that they're arbitrary and capricious and they're thousands of times over the level of what hurts people. That is a proven fact. There's no question about that. If you're a human being, human beings shouldn't be wanting to do this to other human beings. You have to understand what you're doing. This is a human experiment. You're radiating the whole world. You're ra we're radiating everybody. We're microwaving everybody to death. Here's, this is an article that was published in Excuse me one second, I'll just... Electromagnetic Biology Med Medication Medical Journal. Dirty electricity, also called electrical pu pu pollution, is high frequency voltage transients riding along the 50 or 60 hertz electricity provided by the electric utilities. It is generated by arcing, sparking, and by any device that interrupts current flow, especially switch mode power supplies. It has been associated with cancer, diabetes, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder in humans. Epi epi epidemiological evidence also links dirty electricity to most of the diseases of civilization, including cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and, su and suicide. Beginning at the turn of the 20th century, there's a book called um, something rainbow, I forget, Doris probably knows, by Arthur Furstenberg. And as we've been electrifying the world more and more, people are getting sicker and sicker. Is this what we want? We want to, I mean, we're just going to kill off humanity. Okay, ma'am. I mean, that's what the end the result of this is going to be. Ma'am, you've had over 10 minutes now. All right, would anyone else in the virtual world like to speak tonight? Is Lynn Stewart online tonight? All right. Anyone else in the courtroom tonight? Would anyone else in the court courtroom tonight like to speak? Come on up, sir. I'm Jason. I'm a resident of Heastville, and um, I just wanted to make a few observations and comments, and then uh, follow that up with a co with a question to Dominion. Um, my observation is that I don't think it had to be like a grilling here. I don't think that. It needed to be a, uh, a grilling, and Dominion wouldn't have had to be on the hot seat if only, if only the, there had been informed consent, and if the customers, your customers, the people you serve, they are your customers, and you're supposed to be serving them, if you had given them an honest choice with actual information about the, the product that and, and rather than forcing it on them, because really, let's face it, this is being forced on everyone. This is being forced on people, okay? I mean, you have to be absolutely diligent and watch your home to keep them away. They've come to our house several times, several times, three times, I think, trying to install it, even though we very clearly sent them uh, certified mail, uh, which apparently, you know, they said they never got, but, um, Anyway, we sent them by certified mail, called them and everything, uh, told them we did not want it. We put a letter on the um, tape to the meter saying that we don't want the smart meter. Thankfully, we've, we've staved them off all three times that they've come. Um, so we still have the analog meter, but uh, we would not if we had not been very diligent. Anyway, my point is that you serve your customers to provide power. They are paying customers it didn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be a grilling. Serve your customers, and especially given the fact that you're basically, the utilities represent a government authorized monopoly. They don't have competition. If there were competition, I think we would see other companies that would come out, we'd see competition that would come out and say, hey, we'll offer you 
the analog meter, you can, you can keep it, you know? And, uh, and I think we'd actually see a much better service. We'd see much better service if it were not a gov government authorized monopoly. I hate that word, by the way, monopoly. So my question is, what is Dominion going to do to start better serving their customers and start providing informed consent and actually make it not so difficult, not putting people through the ringer to keep their analog meters. Thank you. Then you want to reply? Sure. <clears throat> The program we have, so first of all, Dominion is a regulated monopoly, I think you used the term. We're a regulated entity. We have to serve our customers based on SCC regulations. The SCC has approved the rollout of AMI and our opt-out program. This is what we're going to do. It is, we are trying to balance, whether you believe it or not, we are trying to balance between providing what is needed to serve our customers and s reducing costs associated with doing so. We've put a lot of time and effort into researching and uh, getting information from the market on how to go about this as efficiently and cost effectively as possible. We had to submit a cost-benefit analysis to the SEC for our program, which again has been approved. We're 93% through the deployment of AMI statewide. <coughs> this is the program, this is what we're doing, and this is what we're gonna continue to do. Thank you. Thank you. All right, would anyone else like to ask a question tonight? Steve, come on up. <coughs> Good evening, board. Larry Henson, Westmoreland County, Montross. Uh, unfortunately, I'm a victim of the radiation from the smart uh, <coughs> meters. Um, ever since they started the meter, I guess my house last fall, I wake up between midnight and 2 a.m. Never had no problem before. I always slept straight through eight hours. Good sleeper. So I went to my doctor, explained to him, and told him what happened, so he wrote me a letter give to Dominion, and I'm going to give it to them tonight and see if they're going to help me to move the uh, meter and put me back an analog, which I had before for years. No had no problem at all. Like the lady from Fairfax just called, and she spot on correct everything about the health issues. Hmm. Absolutely true. I got it right here. Thank you for your time. Appreciate the meeting tonight, and thanks so much. All right, thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Mike Bryson from Calio. Uh, I have a question. You had mentioned that my current meter, though analog, has Break your comments to the board, please, oh. sir. Well, they're behind it. I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have a, I was told I have a, like the radio they're saying. It picks it up. Nobody actually gets out of their car and comes by. So then I got to look at the, the new ones and the ones that I want. No, I'm not, I don't want to be committed to this. They don't have antennas in that. And then they're complaining about having people out there. And, and that's why I, I just get the idea that all this went through, they put all the stuff, then all I'm hearing about, I have a friend of mine too, $500 bill. Crying her eyes out. She didn't have that kind of money. She's got three kids at home. I don't know what to say, you know. I said, Gee, well, I said, well, call them because there's something wrong. But I want to know why they don't have an antenna in there. I'm opting out. There's no antenna in the opt-out. Well, why not? The opt-out meter, the point of it is to not have radio frequency, not to have a NIP call. Not disconnected. It doesn't exist. It, there's no NIP call. In the meter. We can't hear. We can't hear anything <coughs> going on. We brought one. It's also a slide on here. Um, yeah. 
There is. Yeah, I wish I had that slide up. Keep going down. But to the point of what we're saying on the opt-out meters, when we first got those in, in the early years, we were remove the NIC card from them and there'd be no communications. Like your AMR meter, what we call the old technology, has a, just a one-way signal wake-up tone, gives us just a reading and we go away. Now, since there's more concern around radio frequencies and things like that, we want to offer this opt-out option. So we have purposely went to our meter manufacturer and say, you will build us a meter to this spec that will never, ever see the light of day that will have a communication card in it. That's what we call our opt-out meter, and that's what we'll be installing onto residents who want that option. Um, but it does require, again, as Patrick stated earlier, someone physically to come up and, and read that display and get that reading so we can accurately bill you for that. So that's probably why you won't see that in the new meter. Do you have the opt-out already, or is it? Well, you never give me an answer. Or is it AMI currently, and you're waiting for I an answer? I have the old one right now, and I'm looking at, I'm thinking, do I want to put that opt-out in there right now? I'm, mm -hmm. I have to go one way or the other. Yeah, because like I said, the, the, the unsupported technology, and well, that's one reason we're replacing it. To me, it's, you're, it's as if you're just saying, well, that, there's another job off the market. <coughs> Actually, I, see, I see what you're looking at, I see, but like I said, all of a sudden now you're going to tell me that I'm, what I did all these years, under what I did every, every day I did, or what I watch at certain times, or what I'm doing at certain times, and now you're punishing me for it, because I'm in a different thing. I, I'm just going to tell mm -hmm. you what I'm seeing right now. This looks like when phones came out, and you stepped into, oh, you went over your bill. This is out of your, your lot, you know, you only signed up for this. This is where you are. So well, you're getting punished now. Yeah, like I said, the punish part, I'm sorry I'm not following on that. I'm punished because here I am, this is what I'm doing, regular day. Mm -hmm. But now let's say I go to the new one, and everybody that I've known has had it, their bill went up. So I can't, I can't go along with all the crap I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. But I see this is going down. So now you're saying, oh, from, we'll say, till 8 o'clock at night, from 5 to 8 o'clock, don't be doing your wash. Oh, well, that, okay. that's, I guess we're, we're conflating two topics. Well, I think the topic we were talking about earlier <coughs> was the use rate. There won't be an option with opt out. The only thing we're ever going to have is just a straight kilowatt read from your meter, and that's the only thing we can get. What are you going to punish me for having that? I'm not going to punish you. I want to make, sure. Sure. make sure everybody's clear. Uh, 2.878 million people are going to get smart meters. The only people that are going to get the off-peak plan are those who call in and sign up for it. You will stay on the same rate plan you've had the entire time when we switch your meter. Just because right. you get a smart meter, you do not get a new rate. You have, you have to have the smart meter to opt into that rate, but you have to call us and ask for that rate. We don't change your rate with the meter. No. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Why not? One more lady. Uh-oh. All right. I got time for one more question. This the little old lady. <laughs> Sharon Bryson from Calio. Um, as you can see, my husband has a pacemaker. He cannot have all this stuff running around. He's got a machine that watches him. So are we going to be punished for, I, I understand you're saying the rates are the same. My question is, are we going to be charged every month when somebody comes out to read a meter? No one said anything about that. that, that Direct your questions to us, please, oh. ma'am. Um, are we going to be charged? There's nothing mentioned about, like, the opt-out people, they have to send somebody out. You're asking whether you're going to be getting an additional charge, charge every month. Nobody about that at all. Is there going to be a charge then every I can't month answer that. that. Maybe Experience. Dominion can. Okay. All right, so part of the documentation that you filled out to get an opt-out meter, it said at a later date we, there may be a charge for this, right? And so we're going for approval to get a charge onto that program, and once that is approved and we're going to enforce it, you'll get another letter to let you know, hey, this is what has been approved that's going to be on your bill at a monthly rate. Do you still want to stay in this program, or would you like to go get out of the program? 
So will it have anything about health issues like medical? Like if you have a medical issue where you can't have this, you're going to be charged more because you have a medical issue. If you would like to opt out, it would be. It's kind of like discrimination. It's discrimination because you have a medical issue. You can't have that on your house. You can't have that around. You've got other monitors in the house. Is that going to be a discrimination charge? It's not going to be a discrimination charge. If you want to stay in the opt-out program, you will have to pay the fee if there is one approved. Okay. One more question. I'm asking, I know for a fact that the health system is shut down money-wise. Nobody can send any claims in. There's billions hanging out there. None of the doctors are getting paid. Is there going to be a case where they can shut down everybody's electric if they get into your cybersecurity, somebody holds it for ransom and nobody has electric? Would that be ever a case? Not that I know of, no. Okay. If you were going to turn off the electric grid, you wouldn't do it at a meter level. You would do it at a higher level. Well, that's what I mean. At a higher, not meter level, higher level. Like can somebody go in there and shut everybody down? I can't speak to that. Yeah. All right. That's what I'm asking. Yep. Let's wrap it up. Yep. We've got to wrap this up. We've got other stuff to do. They have cyber attacks. We're dead in the water. All right. All right. Did you get your question answered? Okay. Just ask it. All right. All right. Does any board member have any other questions? No. All right. Well, I'd like to thank people from Dominion coming here tonight. I appreciate every question that you answered. I know some of them were difficult, but I do appreciate your answers, and I thank you very much for coming. And I thank all the people that came tonight and participated. So thank you all very much. Well, we appreciate your time, board and commissions. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're right. But some of them closed. All right. Our next item on our list is the county administrator items. Yeah. I was going to. Well. If that's what you wanted. Mr. Chairman, I move that we adjourn the planning commission members. Well, you never adjourn. You never brought yourself to order, so you don't have to adjourn. On the economic development, would you adjourn, please? Then we can carry on with our business. I make a motion that we, the EDC and the planning commission, adjourn. Second. We don't have a quorum. We're never adjourned. Oh, okay. All right. Get on up out of here. Chairman Haiti doesn't believe we exist. Thank you. Thank you all for coming tonight and attending this with us. Spread out a little bit now, can't we? Yeah, we can spread some. We got some other business that we have to attend to tonight. Earn that big paycheck. All right. Take care. We got a raise. Thank you. I thought we did. Oh, we got combat pay. Combat pay. Hey, those people from Dominion ought to get combat pay. This is a great demonstration. Yes, they need a break. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a 10 minute recess and be right back. No, that's all good. Are you still in practice? No. Oh, you did. Good for you. Stuart, thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Getting back to order, if everybody's ready. Next item is the county administrator items reports. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, as you know, we had an event yesterday with the tornado. We did have a total number of homes affected. We're about 20. The damage assessment team went out and did these assessments today. We did have one destroyed house, one with major damage, and two with minor damage. The other houses did have some sort of shingle loss or something like that. 
or I would like to thank the Calio Volunteer Fire and Rescue, um, Fairfield's Volunteer Fire Department, Northumberland Department of Emergency <coughs> Services, Northumberland Sheriff's Office, Copal District Volunteer Fire Department, Lancaster Emergency Management, uh, and also state agencies, including VDEM, VDOT, and Virginia State Police. I uh, would also like to thank, of course, the Sheriff and um, Sheriff Beecham and Chief uh, Balderson as well for their help. And of course, uh, Captain Allen. Um, uh, we had one injury, but they refused transport, if I'm correct on that. So. Uh, in front of you tonight, we do have a um, declaration of a local emergency. Uh, we did declare an emergency yesterday at 4.45 p.m., uh, so we just need the board to ratify that emergency. All right, what's the pleasure of the board? Need a motion. Yeah, need a motion, Jim. Yeah. All right, I got a motion to I'll have second. a second. I'll second right, I got a motion to second. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, Mr. Tadlock, like your motion passes. All right. Uh, One thing to add to your list, it was uh, Dominion Powell and the, the crew that come in to come yeah. fight. I'm going to tell you what. When they got there, they took charge of the trees and, and clearing the road and all, and those guys done a good job. Uh -huh. Uh, one thing I want to want to say too, and I think we should send a letter of appreciation. We got Minion, uh, Rescue Squads, uh, Fire Department, Sheriff's Department, and all, thanking them for. Uh, not trying to, to exclude Calvin Heaver, but. Uh, Uh, wasn't for them, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Uh, and that's one of the challenges. You start thanking people in the, the list. You, Let's do a big yeah. thing. Um, yeah. one, we can do one big thing. Well, no, I, and I say that because uh, also, like, social services came out uh, for us and Red Cross. Uh, Red, Cross. Yeah, Red Cross, it was a lot of different agencies there. Once they got the command set up, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, Calvin and Ashby, they rocked. They, I mean, they, they had it put together. And even the, even the sheriff participated a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, you get some credit too. <laughs> no, I, I just want to thank everybody yeah. for the service that they did. Uh, uh, Without these people, we would not be able, we could not have done it. It was very nice, very appreciative. No, no, that's all right. Um, did you all voted on that? Yes, voted on that. All right, uh, next item I have, uh, times uh, past any type of event that we've had like this, the board has waived permit fees that are directly related to uh, building permits, uh, zoning permits, those types of fees, just for those that are involved with the tornado activity. Uh, is all that would include. We need to do that again this time. We, it, it would be separate uh, for that. We need a motion for that. Whoever wants to make the motion. Got a question. If you, if you waive the permit, does that in fact waive the uh, inspection. inspection completion? No, the, they would they would okay. still be required to pull the permit, but there would be no fee for Good. that. Good. I was going to ask the same thing. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I got a motion to uh, waive the permit fees. Do I have a second? Second. Got a motion to second. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, that takes care of that one. All right, uh, next item is the VMRC grant application, and I'm going to let Mr. Basie handle this as he's been involved with this project. Can I, uh, I want to interject really quick. Because of my relationship with the person involved with this application, 
I'm going to abstain from commenting and abstain from voting. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Charles Williams, who's also on Planning Commission, um, stayed. He's in here to answer, help answer questions as well. He had a boat at his marina that was taking on water and process of getting the ownership transferred over to him and had it removed, and it cost <coughs> him and he reached out to BMRC and, and found out about the ADV um, grant. He worked on the application himself, then was going to try to submit it, realized that it needs to be submitted by the county on his behalf. He's asking for us to submit for $10,000 on his $16,000 and, and plus expenses that he's incurred because he was told by BMRC that 10,000 range was, was what they typically were comfortable approving. That it could be approved. Um, he's, so he's, at, he's provided us all the information from all the expenses he did, has a bunch of pictures in he, he, uh, the application. I just went in and um, modified it just so it would be an application from the county instead of from Mr. Williams. Now, Mr. Williams, that you want to I, I, th I think what you had you had um, in excess of sixteen thousand in expenses. You're you're requesting the reimbursement to be for ten thousand. No, I, I'd like for it just to go whatever the amount was on there. Okay. And it, if if VMRC okay. feels like they it only should be a portion, they they okay. can do go, that. So go the full amount, okay. But it's my understanding that it's a good chance that the 16,000 um, uh, may go through. Okay, so I'm going to take a shot at that. And that's that's just I, that's just your out of pocket cost, more or less. That's not counting your headache no, aggravation. No, a lot more than that. I, I'm, I've got over 20,000 in it, but I, for some of the expenses, I paid cash. I didn't have receipts for them. But uh, as you're going along, when you're in a hurry and trying to get stuff done, anyway. Um, but I, I'll be happy if I could get that much of it back. That I, and I have uh, documented the rece with receipts, and I've got check stubs too. Yeah. yeah. That that whole thing just it's just a bad situation. Yeah, but it's it's over with now, and I'm happy. Right. So, That's the main it's thing. been a headache for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Since um, this is a reimbursement grant, we'll, if if the board chooses to move forward with this, we would submit it on. Williams' behalf, BMRC would reimburse the county. Once we get whatever reimbursement the county is getting from BR, BMRC on this particular grant application, we would then have Mr. Williams invoice the county so the county can reimburse him for that. That'd be fine. Yeah. <coughs> All right, you make a motion that we move forward. Second. We have a second. second. Got a motion to second. Any other discussion? Not all those in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Williams I abstain. abstains. There you go, Mr. Williams. We got you. You're welcome to stay. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I know it's not past your bedtime. When, when, you, when you open up, Mr. Williams, I have any more questions. You open up. I, I don't know that I am or not. Huh? No, I. I uh, I'd like to, but I'll tell you what, it's, it's gotten so it's hard to find enough people that want to work. And, well, I help you on that. And, it, you know, they don't always show up when they're supposed to. So I, don't know. I, I haven't given up on it. Don't one. Right now, I don't have a date. So, okay. we'll see. Just give him a list of names that don't want to work. He'll make them run laps, and they'll be more than glad to work. Well, I, I can find some people to work. Yeah, I, I'm going to miss it if I don't go, but uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm still trying. Don't give up. Yep. All right. Thank you. All right. Next item uh, you have in your packet for tonight is uh, the sanitary district uh, is requesting some training on the vacuum system uh, as there are several guys down there that do not have training on that system. Um, usually AirVac only does this training in Indiana. Uh, so Mr. Willard did reach out to them and received an estimate uh, for them to come out to Reedville to provide the training on site. 
uh, in your packet that, that training cost is eight thousand uh, dollars for the um, was it three day three day, uh, three day training. Yeah. yeah. So they've got travel in there as well, um, and that agenda is in your packet as well. That was for all the employees down there. Yes, sir. That's a flat rate, no matter how many attend. Is that right? Uh, to the way that I understand this, yes, with the one instructor. Take it too. Take it. <laughs> that that's everything, Calio too. The people at Calio. I'm not sure if they have the airvac system at Calio. I, that would be a Mr. Woolley's question. <clears throat> I think juniors are talking about if you got any employees up there, they ought to attend it too. Oh, they, the employees at Reedville also are at uh, Calio as well. That we don't have separate. Employees. Would it make sense to talk with neighboring counties to see if they had employees in the same position that would want to take this course also, that could in return share the, the overall cost? I, I can check with uh, with Mr. Willard and see. That'd be good since, uh, but I cost back a little bit if we would. Yeah, if the board is asking the, me to find out additional information on that, I can get that. Well, you won't have to have it. Yeah. End up getting it. I mean, so we might as well get on later. Yeah, I, I moved. We move forward with it, and if we can get someone else to come on board to help share the cost of it, let's do that. Right. Comes on board. If it's only one other county comes on board, maybe they'll split the. So, but the cost, or if two other counties come on, we'll break it up in thirds. I guess the key to that is if there is a max number. Of if there is a max number. Is this, is this a classroom thing? I think it's part classroom and part hands-on, uh, the way that agenda looks. They have the facility down there for classroom? They just have the, the lab. Uh, they don't really have a classroom, per se. Down Reedville. Yes, they could have the classroom up here if necessary. Um, <clears throat> possibly. I, I don't know under what circumstances they need to be close to the equipment to, to demonstrate or uh, uh, you, you would lose some time in, in travel there, too. So. <clears throat> All right. Got a motion. I didn't have a second. All right, I don't have a motion to second. Any other discussion on this now? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Bad luck, that passes. Uh, next item I have is to convene and to close meeting. Uh, I have the motion that uh, Northumber County Board of Supervisors convene and close meeting pursuant to Virginia Freedom of Information Act Section 2.23711A1 for the discussion and consideration of personnel matters, Section 2.23711A7 for cons consultation with legal counsel pertaining specific legal matters where such consultation or briefing in open meeting would adversely affect the board's negotiating or litigating posture. And sections 2.23711A29, discussion of the award of public contract involving the expenditure of public funds, including interviews of bidders or offers, and discussion of terms or scope of such contract where discussion in open session would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body. Invited to attend the closed meeting as necessary are the county administrator, uh, assistant county administrator, uh, sheriff and uh, chief of emergency services as they are deemed necessary in their presence will reasonably aid the board in its consideration of the topics to be discussed pursuant to Virginia FOIA section 2.23712F. All right, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, we are now in closed meeting.
The Northumberland Board of Supervisors will return to public meeting and certify by a roll call vote that only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by the Virginia Freedom of Information Act and as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered during the closed meeting. I got a motion to second. Roll call vote. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Long. Aye. Mr. Brand. Aye. Mr. Fisher. Aye. Need action on the. I'll make a motion. We go into uh, contract with Stratus Paint Corporation to paint the old courthouse and the extension office, and it's in the amount of thirty-two thousand seven hundred dollars. All right. Got a motion to have second. second. Got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 No, sir. All right. I guess we just need a carryover motion to tentative date on the 14th. The Wednesday, April 10th. April 10th, that's what it is. 5.30 p.m. 5.30. And that's for a joint meeting with the school board. Um, I have not gotten that confirmed. Um, if we... What was the date on that, April 10th? Uh, April 10th, 5.30. It's, it's not set in stone yet, but if it's we don't need day. that, I'll let the board know. All right. Do I have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor say, well, wait a minute. Before we do that, you got something you want to tell us before we get out of our meeting? 15. It's at the Calio Brewery. What time does that start? Um, five, five or five thirty. I can I can send out the five. Uh, five. 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 Okay. Yeah. I'll send out the uh, information. Buying the first round. What? That's five thirty, Jim. Oh, put five. Put five. Oh. <laughs> that is a class night. I can't make it. That's your class at night. Okay, that's all right. I eat it for you. That's a that's an in person night. If it was a Wednesday or Thursday, I could slip that. That's good. We'll eat, we'll eat enough for you. That's, that's right. We'll that's that'll good. be all right. Y'all enjoy. That's good. We ain't want you down. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I figured you were going to say that. Yeah. All right. And I'm joking. We got, a, we got a motion to vote on. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank everybody for coming. Do we need, do we need the, uh, Sounds keep good. Getting, keep